Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Segment Routing, the Unified Tunnel in the Future Network, sponsored by Huawei. Before we begin, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. On the right-hand side of your screen is the Q&A. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can submit your question to our speakers via the Q&A box. All questions will be saved, so if we don't get to answer today, we may follow up via email. At the bottom of your audience console are multiple application widgets you can use. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the yellow help widget. Here you can find answers to common questions. A copy of today's slide deck is available for download in the green resource list widget. Towards the end of today's presentation, we'll ask for your feedback. A survey will pop open on your screen and will only take one minute to complete. Your feedback is extremely helpful. Finally, an on-demand version of the webcast will be available about one day after the event and can be accessed using the same audience link that was sent to you earlier today. I'd now like to turn the event over to Principal Analyst in Optical Networking and Transport at Heavy Reading, Sterling Perrin. Sterling? Hi, thanks. Thanks, Hannah. Thank you, uh, everyone, for joining today. Uh, let's, uh, let's get right into it. Uh, so our speakers today, I'll be just doing a very brief introduction on the topic of segment routing and then hand things over to our primary speaker, Gong Yan, who is a senior architect, or, uh, senior architect in the routing domain with Huawei. And uh, we will also, not presenting, but we do have uh, on hand for Q&A portion, Alan Hu, who's a senior director in the fixed network group of of Huawei. So uh, those are our, our, well, our, our presenter and then our Q&A participant. And uh, this is the agenda for the next hour. Uh, I'll provide an introduction of segment routing in terms of definition and putting in context of standardization. And then Gong will take us through the rest of those bullets there, looking at networking trends, challenges with traditional uh, IP MPLS networks, uh, a deeper dive into segment routing, and then some views uh, from Huawei's perspective about the evolution of segment routing, and then the Q&A portion uh, at the end. So just in terms of, of defining uh, segment routing, a couple of terms that are, are used and can cause some confusion. Um, uh, we're talking today about source routing or segment routing, uh, essentially synonymous terms used to describe the, the same uh, concept of routing packets through the network. Uh, in this source routing approach, uh, we have an ordered list of instructions that's applied to an MPLS or applied to MPLS labels at the source node. Uh, so that's the source uh, routing uh, naming of the, of the technique. The label stacks provide all of the instructions that these packets need to get um, to their to their end destination. So if you look at the diagram on the right, the source router, the source node R1, has the segment info uh, in the MPLS header. The destination router in this very simple diagram is R6. Uh, and uh, all of the instructions needed to get there uh, start from um, the very first router. Uh, in this case, we show just three labels. Um, again, it's a simple diagram, but in reality, uh, we have seen um, several studies have shown that uh, most, not all destinations, but most destinations can actually be reached with just two or even uh, one label being applied. So that's one aspect of the simplicity of this technique and why it's of interest. Uh, the other key point is because of the, that, that information is all encoded in the source node, uh, there is no requirement for the intermediate nodes uh, along the, the route to remain to uh, maintain a network state. So again, this is a simple diagram with just a couple routers, but you can imagine a, a national network with many routers through. None of those intermediate rout routers would need to maintain state. Uh, so this is really one of the big reasons why um, segment routing is a, is a much simpler approach to traditional MPLS traffic engineering approaches, which have always struggled due to their complexity. Uh, uh, RSVPTE would be one of those, uh, and so this is Many uh, service providers are viewing uh, segment routing as a, as a more efficient and simpler way to do um, what RSVPTE has historically accomplished. Our speaker, as I said, will provide the details on the mechanics uh, and how segment routing works, as well as some of the use cases. Uh, but the last point I did want to make before handing things over to our speaker is uh, just a, a word about SPRING, um, that final bullet point on the slide. 
Spring stands for Source Packet Routing and Networks, and it's it's the IETF standardized form of segment routing uh, that is becoming very important uh, today. And so uh, there's a, a number of different RFCs addressing Spring. I've just cited RFC 7855 on the slide, which is a, a good introduction to the um, to the problem statement and the requirements that segment routing is addressing. And, and you can find a, a way to different RFCs from from there. Uh, but it, it, it's, it's a very important development in terms of standardization. We think that lack of standardization was one of the biggest barriers to moving forward. And, and now that we see uh, standards coming to light in the IETF, we, we are seeing a huge uptick in service provider interest. And uh, I think one of the big reasons why segment routing is such a big discussion topic uh, this year. And uh, again, part of the reason why we have this webinar today. Uh, so with that, let me just... Uh, advance the slide forward here. I'll, I'll hand things over to Gong Yan, and he will talk us through the rest of those bullet points I showed in the agenda. So, Gong, you can take the presentation from here. Okay, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, here is Yan Gong from Huawei, uh, from Huawei development team. And right now, uh, we put more effort to develop same routing and sharp and i 6 to try to provide more uh, more function to, to our customer. Uh, okay. So uh, uh, so uh, at first, uh, maybe we can review the evolution <coughs> of network. Actually, from our view, uh, there are three stages. At the beginning, uh, it is the traditional network stage. Even the technology has changed from the, the native IP to NTR. And but its basic characteristic is similar. <coughs> Sorry, uh, it is a distributed system and uh, our device executes the function based on predefined uh, protocol and uh, depend on the different configuration, uh, different device well, different roles, and all of these devices uh, work together to provide the service. Customer and actually uh, uh, this network it look work perfect, but uh, uh, because currently uh, the the requirement have some change, so uh, so this network uh, also uh, this kind of camera also uh, so the uh, uh, improved and uh, we know uh, this kind of network is. A little difficult to add some new service. Uh, when they want to add a new service, they have to upgrade the software, and uh, and sometimes the the, the the whole network, the result user is is not optimized. Uh, it is a, it's a problem. So in order to resolve this kind of issue. The ICN cap, the control console plane and the forwarding plane is separated at the beginning device. Uh, the controller is deployed and uh, it, uh, it will control everything in the network. And uh, the device just uh, receives the forwarding table and, uh, from the open flow protocol and uh, it the packet forwarding directly. Uh, at this time, the new it looks the new service can be deployed uh, quickly if the uh, controller will be affected. Uh, but uh, they can say its reliability is not so good, and uh, the convergence of network failure uh, failure uh, always be accomplished accomplished in the controller. Uh, Actually, it's it's slow. It, and sometimes it cannot satisfy all requirement. Uh, the it looks uh, the ICN network is not cannot cannot be big. Uh, so based on based on this uh, question, so the network the controller is keep on evalu evaluated. Uh, so the controller is just a change to new cell. Uh, so, uh, some control, uh, some control function is go back to the forwarding device, and the controller is just uh, 
looks like it's due to some automation of some like uh, optimization and uh, uh, fault recovery, this kind of uh, this kind of function. So at this time, uh, controller uh, IC network is, is, is to optimize network and not control whole network. Uh, in traditional, uh, the LDP and RCP is, is deployed, but at this time, it looks uh, this two kind of uh, is two kind of uh, protocol is not so good to to the to the network. So okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, it, it is hey, hey Gong, say, Gong, hey, before Gong, you keep yeah. going, are you able to speak yeah. either a little louder or closer to the mic? We're loud. getting a comment in that you might not be loud oh, enough. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I will. Uh, how about now? That's much better. Uh, it's better. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, okay, I will, uh, I will take care of this one. So, uh, now we can say the the trends of net, uh, IP protocol evolution. Uh, right? Uh, okay. About automation, we uh, I think we know the integration of, with the NMS or controller. Uh, the cost is 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 very big. Uh, many uh, many uh, protocols should be integrated. Uh, so. Uh, in order to support the automation, the, uh, the, the protocol simplify is very important. Right now, uh, it looks like uh, uh, we, have, we have many protocols. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, like uh, for service, we have VLL, VPRS, and R23 VPN, many kind of VPN service. And, uh, those service uh, is is built by BGP or LDP. Uh, Sometimes uh, we can say the tunnel. Okay, we have LDP tunnel, and we have. Uh, Sometimes we can deploy the RCP tunnel. So uh, we know we have to uh, configure many different uh, configure many different protocol, different configuration. Uh, also, we know uh, different vendor. It's uh, it's a command line. It's, uh, it's a different style. Uh, so uh, its integration is uh, the cost will be very huge. But uh, in the future, uh, all VPN service uh, will be supported by eVPN protocol, and uh, its configuration will be more like R3 R3 VPN, and the BGP will be only service bed uh, protocol. All the, uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, the, uh, the LDP and RCP were replaced by MPRS, uh, uh, by semi routing. Uh, right now, it is MPRS semi routing. In the future, I think uh, the uh, SRV6 will be, uh, uh, will be deployed also. Also, for the management uh, plan, uh, okay, maybe we have, we have, we have NetConf. We have telemetry, but uh, finally, the, its a beta model will be young model always. It is a uh, young model driven uh, management. Okay, we come back to have a look what is the gap of the RDP and the RCP. Uh, so it's uh, about RDP. It's uh, just uh, driven by IDP roots uh, for uh, uh, the. Uh, the device get IDP root and uh, distribute the label for 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 all of these routes. So uh, when they when they uh, select the LDP, we have to face uh, some issue. The first uh, we have some the control plan is more complex. We have to deploy the IDP and the LDP together. Also due to they are have two different. Uh, Protocol. So sometimes when the some the, the the system have the failure and sometimes the failure recovery, uh, the, we need to distribute IDP and RDP synchronization. This kind of protocol. It's like this way. When the the failure recover recovery, the IDP will be uh, convergence at first. 
But at this time, at this link, no LDP label is 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 uh, distributed. So at this time, the IP is okay, but MPRS is not uh, is not working. Uh, we just uh, at this time we just uh, uh, we just need a synchronization pro uh, f uh, future to block the IP route uh, switch back. And after the link get the the LDP label, and uh, then the uh, the uh, based on the IP routing uh, switch back, the LDP also will work fine. So uh, so at this time uh, uh, this process is very very complex. Also due to the IDP, uh, LDP is just based on the IDP route, so uh, no traffic in near function. It is RDP's problem. Uh, about uh, RCP, uh, we know uh, the problem is uh, due to uh, we need a, sing a signal to build the tunnel uh, between the, uh, the south to destination. So uh, there are have the scalability issue. Then we want to distribute many, many RCP tunnels. The, thing, uh, the signal, the device pressure will be high. Uh, Sometimes uh, the, the, the device, some key point, it looks like uh, this kind of key point cannot accept so many RCP tunnels. Also, the RCP tunnel uh, don't support ECMP. Okay, so, uh, even we have some, some uh, protocol to support it, but uh, it is not popular now. Okay, so uh, we can have a look what is the spam routing. Okay, actually, uh, somebody already introduced that. We just uh, go through it in brief. Uh, spam routing is just don't like uh, 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 RDP and RGP. They don't need a signal to, to, distribute, uh, uh, to distribute a label one hop to one hop. They just need the uh, IDP to take uh, to uh, take this global label uh, flood to full network, and the controller will use this top logic and the uh, global label information to calculate from A to H uh, a label stack. Uh, one label is a uh, one SID, uh, and uh, it, it will be uh, identified the, the, the whole path. Uh, this path uh, can be followed the route and sometimes can be uh, defined in any way. So about some routing, there have some advantages. Uh, it, 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 at least its protocol is simple. No, only have IDP, no LDP, no RSH. Also, its scalability is very, uh, is very high because no any signal to, to uh, to notify the each node to uh, to identify the the, the, the tunnel. Uh, also, uh, due to we can uh, uh, we can define the forwarding path uh, manually, so its programmability is very very high. Final, uh, finally, we know uh, in the in the same routing, uh, there have uh, TRR fee. And uh, any cast uh, uh, protection also have the SRTE, uh, uh, FR. So its reliability is, is also will, uh, will be better than traditional uh, protection uh, future. Just like uh, traditional uh, RFA, FR, IGP RFA, FR, it, uh, it only can protect uh, uh, 75 scenarios. Uh, percent scenario, and uh, so it's the following uh, uh, future remote RFA uh, is only just around 90 percent uh, future uh, protection, but uh, TRFA is can achieve 100 percent uh, protection. So. Uh, we can say right now the semi-routing, it, it is NPR semi-routing. 
it's a forwarding plan um, and tariff. Uh, right now, uh, it is this scenario, no RDP, no RSAP. Uh, each, each uh, uh, before the IPA packet, it is a, a MTRF label stack. One stack, uh, one label is one, uh, is, uh, it's just to identify what the forwarding path. In the future, due to uh, just like uh, IPv6 uh, deployed and the 5G or IoT, uh, even or, or cloud, I, uh, the, uh, the MTRF similarity will be uh, well, uh, well, be uh, to the SRV6. Uh, it's the forwarding plan is changed to IPv6 forwarding, and uh, still no LDP. We can say it's a package is different. Uh, in the SRV, uh, IPv6 packet, the, uh, a new header, SRH header is added. Uh, there, there are a set of IPv6 like uh, label. Uh, one, uh, one. Uh, 128 bits is one label. Uh, at this time, uh, one label can have more uh, program capability. Uh, we can say one label can have two parts, one part to indicate the locator, uh, the, which device will receive this packet. Another part is means in this locator, in this device, which kind of function will be used. Just like uh, we can support, uh, uh, we can support R2 VPN, we can support R3 VPN, uh, and so on. So this kind of uh, evolution uh, is just uh, to uh, to help the, the network to support E2E function, E2E network with the visibility uh, visible and uh, E2E service deployment. It is because Traditional MPR is just a high it's self domain. It's programmability is just from MPR ingress to egress. But uh, due to SRV6 is IP forwarding, so it is easy, more easy than MPR to support it. E2E deployment. Okay, so it is uh, advantage to SRV6. We compare with the traditional uh, technology and the SRV6. Uh, it is from one DC to the DCI to another DC. Uh, in within DC, it is IP and uh, plus VXLI. So and uh, the traditional the DCI is MPRS LDP or TE or MPRS similarity. So it is a gateway. Uh, in the gateway device, we have to mapping from VX line to MPRS R3 VPN or uh, R2 VPN. It's another side, we need to map the R3 VPN or R2 VPN back to, to VX line with I. But uh, in the uh, in the in the future, uh, in SRV6 scenario, uh, it is uh, it pro the, pro provides the chance. To support E2E support, uh, E2E uh, service deployment, so it is. I think uh, we think it is the advantage, uh, the most important advantage of SRV6. So okay, uh, this page is uh, from uh, is from Huawei view how the. Uh, in the future, the, the network, how to select the, tech, uh, the technical direction. Okay, right now, most the network is IPv, IPv4 and PRF. Uh, okay, maybe it is RDP or RSVP. Uh, so we think that this kind of network uh, will be, will be, can be, uh, uh, can be, uh, uh, can be to the, uh, Sam routing uh, IPv4 and Paris sam routing directly. Uh, it is a, it is a good uh, selection, but uh, uh, it is a, uh, here is about IPv6 and Paris. Uh, actually, uh, I think maybe nobody want to imp uh, 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 improve their uh, network to IPv6 and Paris now, because right now the the industry. Uh, it's a pure integrity. 
uh, in the industry. Also, uh, we can use IPv6, uh, IPv4 MPR uh, plus 6P to support IPv6 functionality. Also, uh, from the IPv4 MPR same routing, uh, I think the uh, we think the next uh, hop is SRV6 directly, not IPv6 MPR same routing. Uh, because uh, in the future, the network is a data center uh, uh, centric element. I think uh, the pro they need the pro uh, protocol unified uh, um, uh, in the D data DCN and the DCN network. Also, uh, SRV6 is easy to support cloud network uh, and uh, it's have more uh, programming capability. Uh, well, uh, the new service, the new uh, 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 the new APP can be deployed more easily than MPR system routing. It is uh, Huawei's view. So, uh, so also about same routing, uh, uh, one uh, one function is very very important. How to migration from the traditional net uh, MPRs to uh, to MPRs same uh, routing or SRV6? Actually, Huawei, uh, now Huawei already supports uh, those function. Uh, one scenario is interworking. Uh, the left side is uh, from the uh, LDP domain to left side is same routing. Right side is is LDP domain. So uh, we just uh, uh, deploy the uh, same routing mapping server to support it, and then okay, the the whole network migrate to SR only. Uh, another kind of uh, scenario is uh, we can deploy the LDP and the same routing together. We can use tunnel policy to select tunnel from the LDP tunnel to same routing tunnel. Then the uh, then we remove the LDP uh, deployment. Uh, then uh, to uh, accomplish the same routing deployment. Also, uh, all of this is 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 same routing current uh, uh, progress. Uh, actually, for same routing, they also have new challenge. Is is just like uh, for for 5G solution. Uh, we know the slicing uh, is, is the most important feature in, in 5G solution uh, for different service, maybe different uh, slides and, uh, will be needed deployed in the physical network. Uh, at this time, maybe uh, have, uh, there have some different uh, selection. Why is with, uh, with traditional T tunnel? Okay, uh, the, uh, it's uh, can perform. Uh, the performance can be guaranteed by RCPT resource reservation. Uh, but uh, there have some uh, the the scalability scalability uh, problem. Another another selection is SR based solution. Uh, actually, it, uh, right now it looks like SR is is widely accepted in the future. Uh, transport network, uh, the protocol uh, is will be simple, and uh, the network and uh, the, the status maintenance is is less, and the higher perform, uh, performance in the large large network. But uh, I, uh, right now, same routing also have, uh, need some new extension. Just like uh, right now, the same routing haven't resource reservation and assurance. Uh, uh, capability. Uh, right uh, now, Huawei is researching in this way, in this way. Also, uh, how to the strict isolation? Uh, it is uh, it is how also have relation with resource resource reservation. Finally, is scalability integration between overlay and underlay network resource. Uh, all of these have have relation with resource. Uh, Huawei is try to do our best to 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 get some solution to support uh, this kind of future.
so okay, uh, my presentation is finished. So I. Uh, hello. Okay. My presentation. Thank you. Yes. Yep. yep. So let's uh, let's move into the Q and A. We've got actually quite a few questions have uh, have come in. Let's just advance over to the Q and A. Uh, so good. And I believe we we do have Alan who on the line. Alan, are you? Yes. Are you, uh, yeah. okay, so good. I try to respond to everything by text, but maybe I can go through uh, the, the question again. And, yeah, and no, let me, I, uh, I can ask, more, yeah. I, we, uh, we can ask the some questions Some questions, live. if I don't, I need a yen to support it, and we can try yeah. to answer it one by one, is that okay? Or how to do yeah, it? I, I can just open the line and somebody can jump in. Right. So, right. So we, uh, yeah, we like to go through them live, and then uh, if, if we don't have an answer, that's okay. But uh, let me just see if I can get through okay. a couple of these ones with you. So, uh, one of them came in uh, about O A and M in segment routing, and so maybe if you can just address that verbally for the other folks on the audience uh, as well. How do you deal with O A M in segment routing? Yeah, a typical OEM uh, we still enable Core BFT to trigger uh, a lot of stuff in the OEM layers. So BFT still gives the main tool features to address OEM for segment routing. Okay. Uh, yeah. And we okay. had a yeah. We had a couple that reference specific slides. Let me see if I can. Uh, let's see. So there was one came in. Uh, I can get this right. A uh, picture with the data center and uh, data center in segment uh, routing v6. Is that a, a vision or a commercial commercial product? Yeah, I just uh, tried just to respond up. by text by uh, answer it. Uh, I guess segment routing. If you check the segment routing called SRV6, uh, we working on it. Uh, it's not a purely say it's mature enough. But it is not the vision. We we work on it. There are a lot of features we put on the product. And if you check end to end side from data center to another data center, that's probably not commercial available at this time. But the majority of features uh, we already supported on the product. I would say it's coming. Um, not the vision, but it's coming. Maybe the next year we can do some lab test to do work on end to end stuff. Yeah. Okay, and then maybe a related question from me on that. So, you, aside from the, this uh, particular slide on segment routing v6, you went through a number of slides uh, on the webinar about uh, showing in in v4 implementations. Could you clarify how much is uh, your production network uh, today within the the v you know the v4 M MPLS uh, segment routing? Is all of that production ready network or with some of that future looking and just trying to get a sense of how much is deployed today versus how much is, is more future looking? Uh, if you check uh, right now the segment routing side, we mostly focus on the service provider network. So we work with a major carrier like uh, SoftBank and some I know the European uh, operators also looking for it. And I would say at this time, Majority job function on the Japan uh, carrier, the SoftBank, we deploy some and some like the border point are looking for it. And that's kind of majority focus on service provider network. But if you do like uh, end to end from DC side to uh, cross the uh, service backbone, so that's some part of it probably not ready yet, but that we work on it. It says for service provider network, we are uh, from product line side. We pretty much can support it uh, on the oldest uh, uh, called NE series routers, you know, from our side. Yeah, but we still improve okay. because SRV, SR MPLS or SRV6. Some are not mature enough. Some still in the draft stages, but some draft already supported. Yeah, even in the draft stage. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. And let's see, we actually got quite a few questions in. Uh, the, 
Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so there was a question, uh, this one, let me go to the slide. Uh, this was okay. from early on in Gong's presentation. Hold on one second. I'm just going to push the slide to the audience. Uh, so hopefully that's up. So the question was, how does the third model with the controller at the node improve network reliability? So maybe, so that's the evolution uh, with an SDN network uh, scenario that hopefully everybody can see. Can you just address that in terms of uh, reliability? Uh, uh, okay, so actually, uh, before I discuss with the GNs, and I would say we have we work on some specific stuff to improve reliability. Uh, originally, mm -hmm. we have one dedicated slide to explain how to enhance the reliability. Uh, I'll emphasize only, and we can have some scenario, and we you know nodes combined with the controller, we can avoid not just a fast reroll, we can avoid some micro loop scenario. So. I would say we can count more scenarios to improve the reliability. So all the fast reroll timings, we can control less uh, less than uh, 50 milliseconds. That's uh, pretty much the answer from me. So if you uh, want a more detailed implementation side, probably need R&D support to, ex to explain. I would say originally we have one dedicated slide to explain this. So that's a little bit technical to explain even more. At this time, we'll say mm -hmm. we do cover more scenario to uh, failure scenario, and we still can guarantee all the fast zero time less than 15 milliseconds. So is the reliability part of the segment routing uh, the way it's standardized, or is that the way each uh, vendor implemented in the network? Uh, that's uh, some called TIFLA. Uh, that's a kind of a protocol that we use. It's kind of standardized. Yeah, but we try to okay. enhance right. the more feature on it to improve it. Yeah. Got it. Uh, uh, there was a uh, question. Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Okay, right. uh, about this one, uh, maybe I can add some additional information yeah, about more. this reliability uh, issue. Actually, uh, the the third picture and the uh, the uh, the second picture and the third third picture, the difference is the forwarding device still have some some control, uh, just like uh, the local convergence uh, when in the failure process. Uh, uh, each node still still handle it. Uh, it can have faster convergence. It can have the deployed calculator, the the TRFA some FR uh, 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 function. Uh, don't like the second uh, picture. Uh, all of this kind of calculation will be done in the con controller. Okay, sometimes we can say the forwarding device also can support the relab, uh, the IFR, but uh, uh, all all of these calculation have to be done in the controller. It it's it's uh, work will be very very huge, but the third one is each one still have its self control. It's well uh, so we can deploy more local convergence functionality. Just like a TRFA, it's each node based on the whole topology to calculate how to protect the link failure or node failure. Yeah, okay, it's all. good. Uh, yeah, thanks for that explanation. So let me move back to the Q&A here. Uh, so we have a question about uh, quality of service uh, in the, the slicing, I, I believe. Maybe, well, I'm not sure which slide it refers to, but the uh, question is, what about quality of service per slice in segment routing? Are you able to address that question at all? Uh, I would say that the QS per slice is a, is a kind of uh, not a direct related to SR probably, yeah, just, uh, you know, like you know, 5 g slicing. And uh, end to end slicing, we do have a uh, kind of, uh, you know, all you push is called like uh, uh, Ethernet channel stuff. You know, we, we do have called control, try to combine together to uh, network slicing. And uh, when you're slicing, you need like a port or physical port to be sliced, all the nodes have to be sliced together. 
And once you slice it, and each layer, slice layer, you still can enable QoS on it. Yeah. So the slice, the physical layer, you have the slicing, make you isolate the resources. And then on top of that, you still can be, uh, QoS still can enable uh, on, the, on that slide because that's already separate from others, the physical layers. So I would say not for uh, SR, but for the just generic layers, how, how to do QoS on slicing. Yeah. Okay, and it looks like we may have gotten through uh, all of the questions we had in the queue. So why don't we, uh, let me just push out the survey here uh, for the audience. If they can, uh, just if the audience, if you can take a moment to fill out that survey, uh, it should be uh, popped up on your screen. And uh, yeah, with that, I think we have run through the questions. So let's uh, let's close out here. I want to thank Huawei for uh, sponsoring and taking us through uh, the slides and also answering a number of questions. And thanks to the audience for tuning in today. So uh, thank you, everybody, and this will conclude the webinar.